Right now, there are five people on board a vessel bound for the wreckage of the Titanic, and they are trapped inside a space that is just the size of a minivan with only 31 hours of air left to breathe. That is the estimate from the U.S. Coast Guard on the missing sub in the North Atlantic right now. As time is running out, oxygen is dwindling on the Titan submersible. And rescuers are racing against time, literally around the clock, to try to find that vessel before it is too late. And in just moments, you're gonna hear from a reporter who was on that very same submarine just last year. And he interviewed the founder of OceanGate, the company that owns it, who is also among the missing. Just listen to what Stockton Rush told him at the time about the lack of sophistication in the technology that is on board. We can use these off the shelf components. I got these from uh, Camper World. We run the whole thing with this game controller. <laughs> Come on! And you are also about to hear from a friend of a different passenger who received an eerie last text message before setting out on this journey. The sub lost contact on Sunday, and as of this afternoon, the Coast Guard said search efforts so far have yielded no results. Canada has sent additional vessels to assist in that search, but this is an extremely complex mission. That search area is about 10,000 square miles and more than two miles deep. For context, the deepest human scuba diver ever stands at more than 1,000 feet. At more than 3,000 feet, light is no longer even visible in the ocean. And the Titanic, well, that rests way below that, nearly 13,000 feet below sea level. Weather conditions could also be a complicating factor in all of this, not to mention the condition of that submersible and whether it has working equipment that could even get detected. And our first guest witnessed the red flags on that vessel firsthand. I want to bring in David Pogue. He's the host of the Unsung Science podcast and CBS Sunday Morning Correspondent. David, uh, this video of you showing really the insides and interior workings of this vessel basically went viral. Given what you have seen, the seemingly kind of jerry-rigged components of it all, are you surprised that it is now lost? I actually see these as two totally different things because Stockton Rush's answer to that question uh, you haven't seen yet, which is where he said, all these little things like the lights and the con controller and the thrusters, those can break and you'll be fine. The part we put all our attention and care into is the passenger compartment that contains the air, the carbon fiber cylinder. And that we worked with NASA, we worked with Boeing, that, he said, is, is buttoned down and solid. So I, I don't think the, the fact that some of these things are kind of MacGyvered together is necessarily an indication of a general sloppiness. Yeah, I mean, one of the other things that we're learning is that this vessel is really supposed to float back to the surface, especially if something goes wrong. When you were on board and you actually kind of started a, a mission and had to come back up, did they disclose to you what the contingency plans are if something goes wrong? There aren't very many things that can go wrong that you can do anything about, right? So fire is something they addressed extensively. They they showed us where the fire extinguisher was. They have uh, a smoke mask for each passenger. We had to practice putting those on. But beyond that, what can you do if, if the sub gets trapped, if the sub develops a leak, if the sub goes without power? All of the things that can happen beyond that, the answer is the same thing. Get to the surface. And they had so many different ways of getting to the surface. They can drop sandbags. They can drop lead pipes. They, they can drop the legs off the bottom. They have an air balloon that pulls up. They can use their thrusters. And as you mentioned, one of these seven different methods is a dead man switch. That is, mm. it will send you to the surface even if everyone on board has passed out. It's a time release sandbag system that slowly dissolves the connectors underneath the sub and lets them drop off after a certain number of hours. And you go to the surface even if you're not awake. So you were on this vessel, right? I, I wonder, first of all, if you were scared to go down there, but also, were you told what to do in the event of something going wrong? Because my understanding on the, the passenger list are some people 
including the CEO, who have a lot of experience with this vessel, and perhaps some people wow. who are more kind of tourists, like, like you were. Um, again, the only briefing that I remember getting on the sub is about fire. Um, beyond that, there, there just isn't anything we could do. I mean, if a giant octopus wraps its tentacles around, what are you going to do? So uh, I have to say there wasn't a lot of emergency preparedness, but even the most prepared person in the world could not do anything in this situation if A, the sub imploded, B, it got snagged on something underneath, or C, it's currently floating somewhere on the surface with the power gone and they can't reach anybody. Those, are, mm. as I see it, those are the only three possibilities right now. So do you think that it is still possible to rescue this vessel? And if so, how difficult would that be? I, I, my belief is that if it is in the water, underwater, I, I don't understand how it's, it's even conceivable. There, there are only a handful of submersibles in the world that can go to those depths, and none of them are ready to get there within the next 24 hours. And even if they could, first they have to find it, which is unbelievably difficult on the seafloor where there's no light. Secondly, what would you do if you did find it? These are submersibles. These are not submarines. These are low-powered things that need a ship to carry them from place to place. They could not tow the thing up to the surface. So suppose they find it on the seafloor in five minutes, then what? I, I just don't understand yeah. what technology could get them back up. And the New York Times is reporting that industry leaders, they've questioned the safety concerns about the submersible. And they were saying that a lot of the components, the approach was experimental. Did, do you see what they're talking about here? Yes. Um, and this was a big focus of my conversations with Stockton Rush the CEO and the designer. And it is true that the stuff he did is not how people do it. I mean, mm. nobody has used carbon fiber to make a submersible like this before. Nobody has built a submersible that holds five people. The, the, the others all hold two or maybe three, but no one's done five. Uh, he uses all kinds of new techniques and he admits that he has critics. He says all these fuddy-duddies stuck in the 1950s way of doing things, they're crazy. How are you ever going to make progress unless you experiment? He was emphatic that his ways were better, that they represent an improvement, and that they were safe. Well, it continues to be everyone's hope that there is a miracle here, but it's a really tragic situation. David Pogue, thank you. It's good to have you on this. Thank you.